The Mazda CX-60 is Mazda's approach to get into the premium SUV segment, CX-70 model in the US. Will they succeed? And after trying it for the very first time today on German roads to see what have they improved because there were some challenges, a lot of cool things, but also some things they need to work on. Have they solved it? Let's find out with Thomas and Autogefühl. Let's go. What people really love about the Mazda CX-60 is the design. Upright front grille, vertical fins, really strong presence here also with the LED daytime running signature. This one here, rhodium white vehicle and there are also some soul red crystal vehicles for you here and also machine gray so whichever color you prefer a couple of more colors are available. So design wise, especially in the front, I think they really nailed it, didn't they? And I think the same counts for the side profile. 4 meters 75 or 187 inches is the length. That means it's about 17 centimeters or 7 inches longer than the smaller brother, the CX-5. The CX-70 for the US market, by the way, is more or less the same. So everything we're telling you will also count for that one. However, it will be a little bit wider. So even the chassis. And I wonder how that would make any sense cost-wise. Really strange. Wheels 18 or directly 20 inch. These here are the bigger one. And also we can see here painted wheel arches. These you have in the higher trim models. Otherwise you would have crossover wheel arches. Really cool this rear design here also with the tail lamp signature. And I also really like this car here in the white color, definitely. Or the all-wheel drive system, by the way, this is this new platform, big or large platform with rear-wheel drive. And when it has all-wheel drive like this one, it's still a rear-wheel drive bias, even though there's also power to the front wheel. So this is the advantage of this new system here. By the way, here behind me, this is CX-5, that smaller inside competition. They have something in common, but basically platform-wise, they're really apart. Also, the driving will be really different. We found it out for the first time. We'll confirm it today. I'm quite sure about that. In the lowest part, however, out of fuel, fake exhaust police alert because these are the purest form of fake exhaust. The real one is underneath. Car key looks like this, very plain. This is not premium. Door closing sound is very solid, like that. And inside of the doors, this is here the Takumi trim level, a higher trim level. Beautiful styling, bright fabric, and then this bright matte wood. That is lovely. Probably the best master interior we've seen ever. Also some soft touch here at the inside of the doors. So this is really lovely. And here also with the Bose sound system. Steering wheel, the modern style, fits to this new architecture. Zoom more to the digital instruments and also to this infotainment system. This will be very interesting, I can promise. Seats, you can also get base fabric seats if available on your market in the UK market. Also some other markets, only high trim level available. Then either this bright one here or the Homura trim level in the black animal skin leather. So very disappointing that they do not offer alternatives on a high trim level. That is also strategy of yesterday. Seating position is nice and upright, feels grown up. So overall comfortable, seats maybe a little bit too firm, especially here with the animal skin surface. So the material is quite strong actually. The fabric seats and the base trim levels, if available on your market, deliver more comfort. And does it deliver more seating comfort in the front than the CX-5? No. Headroom. Some left with 189 or 6 foot 2, even though this one here is the panoramic roof. That looks indeed pretty fancy. And there's also a real knob here to open that one and then you can have some fresh air in. And if you like, you can also close that shutter here. 12.3 inch on the left, 12.3 inch on the right side. But here, most obvious, beautiful in this trim. Look at that, the bright fabric with the special Japanese art stitching. That is amazing. Soft touch here in the top part. And also this huge middle console. It does cost you knee room here for passenger and the driver, yes, but it looks amazing indeed. And this bright wood here, this is so lovely, great. However, here the shifting lever, that's kind of strange because for parking, this is it. And then to move it into gear, you have to turn to the right side and then it's reverse, neutral and D. And why make it so complicated in a nowadays system? I don't really get it. However, you have something to grab, that's quite cool. 
sport driving mode for example you can access here then with the driving modes and this is then the way to control the infotainment system while driving and i think that's actually a good solution and you can do it like this and the infotainment system is quick and does the job actually it's you know not very complex but most of the time people will not use this car internal gps but then use apple carplay and android auto both available with wireless or wired technology and then you can also still control it with that center node. but now it gets makes it special when you are in this apple carplay or android auto mode then it is a touchscreen suddenly otherwise in this base master mode it is not because master says touchscreens are too dangerous and also it's quite far away here from your driving position so they don't want you to use the touchscreen but in the carplay or android auto mode you can use it as touchscreen maybe stationary or when the co-driver is doing something and this bose sound system here by the way let's listen to it hmm that's nice great song by the way wow that's a very clear sound love that and this is the 360 degree camera its resolution could be a little bit better i think and also that you have this blacked out visualization of the vehicle not my thing is it yours at the steering wheel real buttons for example to control the volume picking up the phone that's really cool and on the right side here for the cruise control i, I really like this user interface here Classic things to press not hashtag capacitive bs digital instruments imitate a classic look i like that and then when you switch the driving modes takes a while but they adapt then it looks also quite fancy like this sport mode for example in red or here the ev only mode when you have the plug-in hybrid very nice visualizations definitely head up display simple but does the job lower climate unit yes thumbs up from thomas side because here well you cannot push them up but here you have still manual climate dials so good user interface and also for the vent strength i still like to have these as buttons you can easier control them while driving so that mazda is very conservative in a lot of ways has advantages in the interior and also here the button quality also here with the heat with the ventilator and heated seats button quality pressing you know the feeling you get there is really cool you do have cup holders here by the way you can fold them open and the middle console console here can be fold like this split opening with two usb-c chargers one of my hidden favorite features is here the normal back mirror which is completely frameless that looks elegant rear seating well when i'm driving in the front it gets already close here at the rear with the knees so it doesn't offer abundance of space in the rear that's a disappointment indeed what's cool however is also the inside materials here on the rear door soft touch then again this nice wood so this is a great build quality that's what i love about this vehicle and you can also see this 90 degree opening of the rear door so well when you don't have so much adults here in the back because you don't have so much space well headroom is okay right you know even with the panoramic roof here it still leaves some headroom but legroom really disappointing but then you can easily install them the child seats here and also here you have some cup holders they are somewhat adaptive with these rubber lips and this middle console here does have more charging possibilities and even rear seat heating when you went for that option now to the trunk or boot area 570 up to 1730 liters i have the suitcase here open that you can see of the width backpack also fits in easily this here is a width that is more than a meter of 40 inches so really good in width length here is a little bit less than a meter or 40 inches and the overall height so um, it's like here it's about 70 centimeters or 28 inches you can also fold that whole thing like this and then reach over here you can also just fold the middle thing but you can see here you would need to move the seat a little bit forward then that it folds completely and the length here to the front seats is about 175 or 68 inches as for drivetrains very interesting here they have the inline four cylinder 2.5 liter plug-in hybrid we we'll also drive that today there will be a three liter six cylinder petrol engine and a 3.3 liter six cylinder diesel engine 
Really strange decisions by Mazda indeed, whereas everyone is now moving away from plug-in hybrids, they introduced their first new one and they're also bringing a new big diesel. Let's see if this strategy will play out. I would like to hear your comments on that. Acceleration figure for this one here, by the way, less than six seconds. So it's also the most powerful Mazda model yet. Battery, by the way, 18 kilowatt hours and recharging AC only 7.2 kilowatt. Welcome. Woo! Interesting. Sport mode acceleration out of the corner. And about this car, we've seen the great design on the exterior. Everyone loves it. At least everyone I heard of. What about you? Interior, great build quality, lacking of animal skin alternatives. That's the catch, but it's very interesting. Not too much leg room, but cool side features. But the driving in the first video we've done to the CX60, there were some catches to the driving. Transition of the plug-in hybrid drive system, for example. Suspension, which was stiff, not that comfortable, so not ideal steering setup. The whole car didn't feel too natural, actually. That was the thing. And now the question is, have they solved this problem? As they told me they worked a lot on this vehicle. For example, steering ratio, setup and transitions of the plug-in hybrid drive system, and especially also with the suspension to make that more comfortable, smoother, and overall a better experience. Because when we compare the CX-5, that is a very good holistic experience that you really feel one with the vehicle. Here with the CX-60, you feel that seating position-wise and interior layout-wise, it's more laid out on a, let's say, a little bit more relaxed tone. However, you have a lot of performance and you have this hybrid drivetrain. Acceleration from 60 kilometers an hour to the German Autobahn. Let's go. 100. 160. That's almost 200 kilometers an hour, 125 miles an hour, top speed. Wow. Good acceleration. That is really yeah, more powerful than ever we've seen. Noise insulation here at higher speeds is very decent here now at 160 kilometers an hour. So they've done a good job here in insulating the vehicle. That is really cool, actually. Blind spot monitor, there's a triangle appearing in the side mirror, but now that car so just to behind us. And here, even at higher speeds, when I pin down, interesting thing is, from that electric drivetrain, that's it. like a first push, I immediately get a first push from the electric drivetrain, and then the combustion engine sets in, so in the sports mode, everything is combined. Yeah, and that you have the real, real drive bias, even though we are here in that all-wheel drive version, that is also a very nice thing to have because it makes the car more agile, it feels sporty and indeed, yeah, I have to say, the car does feel more unified with me already right now. Suspension-wise, we have the 20-inch wheels mounted, so this also reduces comfort always. If you want more comfort with this vehicle, stick with the 18-inch wheels. That is a very important thing to do, definitely because you just lose some dampening from the tires. First thing I'm you know, really positively surprised is that we have a very good noise insulation. That's very good. We're getting off the motorway now. Let's see how that one performs. And also to the normal driving mode. And also these visualizations change. Everything gets a little bit calmer. It does have, by the way, when you're in the electric driving mode, some um, some sound even if you drive all electric you also hear that being in the interior actually so suspension wise i also felt that um, before when we we're testing it the first time the car was on the one hand stiff on the other hand it was you know lifting off the ground in a, in a strange way they also improved it here now i already felt that as for the transitions to the hybrid system yeah of course when i pin it down First, it's electric boost, then all the combustion engine power sets in. Mm, but here, have you seen or felt or heard that? It was like, you know, I'm EV and then 
ICE sets in and it, you know, like, how, how, how would you say you make like a, like a sudden, like a, like this, it's really strange, you know, so, um, oh, yeah, that's definitely louder now <laughs> than any sound. So, hmm, that is something, I feel that these transitions, they said they have worked on these, but that is something which I'm not that okay with. Steering is a little bit stiffer now, so it takes more effort to steer, even in the normal. I think that's a good thing because then you don't steer through thin air. So I like that actually. So by that, it delivers now a more natural driving experience. Here now, some bumps in that getting off on the motor, in the getting on of, on, the, on the motorway that we felt a little bit more so i think really the thing with this car is it's not meant to be this sports experience you know so i think it really makes more sense stick with 18 inch wheels and increase the comfort by that and yes i feel they have improved the things but i can still say when we compare it to the cx5 and it's a tough internal competition because the CX-5 has been out there for so long. It has always been improved, 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 and more improved. The CX-5 definitely feels more than more like the driver's vehicle. This one would be if you enjoy that performance, especially from the plug-in hybrid drivetrain, and later on also the bigger combustion engine, for example. But if you want to drive sportier, then the CX-5 is still the one for you, the pick for you. So noise insulation wise, that's good. And the car doesn't feel um, as off as it used to be before. So it now feels more finished, definitely. So definitely notable step from the early prototype models to the one that is here now, a very interesting finding. Um, it also now feels more Mazda. Before, in the first ride, didn't feel that much Mazda-like because that unity of driver, machine and road was missing a little bit. Um, but it's not the drivable Mazda like CX-5 or MX-5 or even the Mazda 3, which all feel really light and everything in the flow and so on. This one here with the added weight of the plug-in hybrid my estimation is that it will be better with the pure petrol engine with the three liter six cylinder that will be very interesting here with the plug-in hybrid drivetrain i feel that the added weight of the additional battery is not playing well for that vehicle overall and you know some bumps i felt here when the road is even then it's actually fine but as soon as there are some fiercer bumps in the road yeah, then the suspension has still some weakness. It's better than before, but still not the best. Here, assistance systems. You see here the car has been kept in the lane in a quite smooth way. That's actually quite nice. So no hectic steering movements and so on. So assistance systems wise makes a good impression. And as I said earlier, controlling the infotainment system while driving. I'm totally fine with doing that with this, let's call it MMI knob in the lower part because it's far away anyway, and you can very well see it. And I think, yeah, I mean, it, it's not a big disadvantage or something to do it, do it with that. Let's see, one more sporty corner here. Yeah, that weight is pushing me outside. Now a little bit bumpy also in that, yeah, here. It sounds interesting, doesn't it, you know? So the performance is definitely there and let's see how much we can here's the shifting down i just want to provoke the engine or the transitions to do something wrong at this point to to see how it how it has evolved let's put it to ev mode this is then trying to drive electric only temporarily unavailable probably engine is still too hot so that would be something that you can do from time to time then put it to some more city driving here it's a 90 degree turn you have to turn the steering wheel quite a lot so this is also something they've done then here to the steering it is then you know you have more resistance i like that what they could also do my opinion is leave the resistance as it is 
but make it more progressive that you have a little bit more you know angle turn of the wheels when you steer that this would be a good setup when running straight being more comfortable being relaxed for example that makes sense then in this case if you have more agile driving experience it is actually not the best idea it is in a way really hard to compete internally against the CX-5 because the CX-5 yeah I mean it has been perfectionized over the way it's not the fanciest car out there definitely not but this really has a good evolution and one thing also falls off to that is and I'm speaking so much about the CX-5 because a lot of the first orders of the CX-60 were master internal customers the seats here especially with the animal skin service are really really tight and stiff and they're not that comfortable they're not uncomfortable but for a car of that size and that price and so on they should be more comfortable so they should use a high grade soft leatherette for the seat that adapts more to the body some you know what we recently saw at bmw from their evolved sensor tech called sensor fin now that they should also use here in the Mazdas. If you can get it with fabric seats in your market, do it alone for the comfort seek. And of course, and also better for animals and the environment. It's just so pity that this bright interior is only available like this. Uh, it looks so awesome, definitely, you know. I would love this bright interior then, definitely. So, I think when you think about the advantages of this vehicle is the availability of six-cylinder engines and you do not have that with the plug-in hybrid drive chain. So I can really say I would rather wait to get the six-cylinder petrol engine because then, hey, I mean, you either have rear-wheel drive or an all-wheel drive, rear-wheel drive, all-wheel drive, rear-wheel bias system. You have six-cylinder, also more for you know durability, fuel economy, will probably also be not worse than with the four cylinders because you can run it at lower RPM. You have something special, you know. And then when you rather seek something driver focused, you can still go for the CX-5 because it is very well evolved, I have to say. So it is very interesting that we have a lot of improvements here, but I really have to admit that Driving wise, I don't see the big advantages of this vehicle to, for example, CX-5 or then, um, you know, CX-9 um, in, in the US. It is really this premium approach. It's cool design on the exterior and it's this, you know, this, this premium interior. That is really, uh, that is really lovely. This is to me the main reason to buy this vehicle. And it's a very funny thing because so far, you know, they had cool cars on the exterior and so on. And they had okay interiors, but they weren't that fancy, let's take it that way. But the reason to buy a Mazda so far was the driving experience, because it felt so flawless and awesome, and it was so much fun. And I have to say, yes, they fixed a lot of things now, but this car is not so much fun to drive. And the CX-5 is, you know, and that's the core problem of this vehicle. So it has its strength, but it has, to me, lost the unique character that Master stands for driving fun. That's why you call, also call Master the Japanese BMW, for example. So don't, don't get me wrong, this is not bad at all. You know, it's a very interesting, it's a very cool vehicle, no doubt. But it doesn't have this standout driving fun effect that Mazda usually offers even though it has improved now and I have less things to criticize it still doesn't give me the typical Mazda vibe we usually feel so if you ask me hmm I really love fancy stuff in the interior definitely but I would still save the money and get the CX-5 recently also updated or facelifted well but if you really love that one we have more stuff, more content coming up with this one and of course our existing review so far from the CX-60 from Portugal. Also tune into that one.